When villages grow into towns, towns into cities, shops into malls, spaces into estates, when avenues turn into highways, superhighways, subways and runways, then things change. Villages become old, frail women deserted by their offsprings, all gone to the cities with big lights who, unlike prodigal sons, only return in coffins. Homesteads empty like the stare of a nine-year-old, eyes stiffened by industrial blue liquid, face barren of emotion. City streets give birth to illegitimate children, street children who, at the age of six, hang around city corners begging for a shilling, but at the age of 16, you beg them not to harm you as they rob from you in these big city streets and big mall corners, subways and highways. Estates and villas, suburbs and urban spaces, metropolitan cities and industrial areas become fathers who so wild old to slum ghettos, poverty, stricken valleys. In these valleys, girls quickly mature into women, tired children at the age of 16, maybe even 13, where single families spring quicker than a spring chicken, where lands mushroom into shanties and ghettos with no jobs in mine, mines, or offices. When kids can't go to school, only to sit in the sun, counting cars, watching others live their dreams while theirs have been packed away like the textbooks in their bags, then innocence changes. When husbands neglect wives for brewing dance, choosing illicit drinks over tuition fees, when kids go hungry for days and nights, fathers are jobless, fathers, mothers are drunkards. When all one can show for years of sacrifice in school is a piece of paper, a college degree, while unqualified minds run governments and offices, minds change. When opportunity looks at the color of your skin, asking for your names, who you know with lots of muscles, politically, economically, spiritually, when your surname, skin tone determines what doors remain shut, who calls you up for a job, what neighborhoods you can take a stroll in, then minds change. Thank you. My name is Anjeri Wangare. I am a Kenyan writer, blogger, a performance poet, a tech and art enthusiast. I started blogging um, I run an art. I sorry. I run an art blog, which I have been, uh, uh, which I started in uh, the year two thousand and and five, in October, and uh, I had initially started my blog as uh, as a way of for publishing my poetry. As I mentioned, I'm a, I'm a poet, and uh, I had uh, collected quite a number of uh, poems and. <clears throat> I was looking for a way to get published and that was not forthcoming and so I got to learn about blogs and so I started one. And so initially the blog was just about my poetry but with time I learned that I could also share my interest in, in the arts, that's uh, both visual and performance arts and that is what the blog has become now. It is basically uh, a site where someone can get news and information about uh, arts in Kenya. Now, I met uh, Desanjo Macha. He is the Global Voices editor for Sub-Saharan Africa. I met him about um, three, uh, three, four years ago. He got to know about my uh, my um, my poetry, uh, um, more so a poem that I had done just before the Kenyan. Uh, 2007 elections which was called uh, my voting dilemma and as he was doing a post on uh, the Kenyan uh, situation with the upcoming election he came across my poem which he found quite interesting and so he got in touch with me and sought to to quote it 
and so yeah that's how we met he came to Nairobi we met and that's when he talked to me about Global Voices and asked me if I'd be interested in uh, writing for uh, for Global Voices and I was like no problem and so I have been um, contributing on Global Voices mostly on Art Matters but every now and then I get to write on other posts that are unrelated whether social political or um, otherwise excellent yes okay the more general matters what are the main chase challenges that you see facing Kenya today? Wow, um, there are quite a number of uh, challenges. Uh, the biggest one being um, uh, political. Uh, the political challenges that are there in this country are, we're at a point where that feeling of yes the political structure in this country needs to change but we don't know which direction it needs to take because looking at the at, at the what is the ongoings that uh, are there currently politically in the in in terms of uh, the um, aspirants that are coming up who are vying for um, uh, presidential or even other governmental mm -hmm. positions uh, they are quite questionable because we are seeing sort of like um, the same old faces that have always been there in Kenyan politics and so as much as we agree that yes we need a change um, it doesn't feel like we will get that change that we're looking for and with elections we're, uh, happening in, in, no, in, in less than in less than a year then uh, a lot of uh, people like me are becoming a bit dissolution that that is the most glaring uh, challenge mm -hmm. that uh, uh, that is facing a lot of us Kenyans then the second one is uh, economic which is somehow related to poli uh, to political because uh, the standard of living the standard of living in Kenya has gone quite high uh, comparing uh, consumer products uh, you know what we are paying for now compared to a few years ago it, 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 it has skyrocketed and we know that it is related to the political situation and so uh, but uh, it is becoming harder and harder to survive in Kenya because previously what is equivalent of a dollar that's about a hundred shillings or so was enough for someone to be able to buy at least um, a packet of of, of, of maize flour with a staple most, uh, with our staple food being ugali but that is not possible nowadays with a hundred shillings you can barely buy enough and so uh, the other challenges that are there are um, social in, in terms of um, uh, uh, the rate of, of, of crime has gone up the the gap between uh, those with and those without has also uh, sort of like uh, become uh, much wider mm -hmm. and it creates a lot of discontent among among uh, people living in Kenya. Okay. Yes. Um, looking forward to the future when your children are adults, <laughs> what kind of country do you hope will emerge? When I think about... Uh, I have a daughter who is... Um, one year and uh, eight months and uh, with another one uh, on the way and I get a bit worried quite concerned actually um, on the uh, concerned about the kind of uh, country that they're going to grow up to because ideally I would want them to grow up in a country where they have access to the basic amenities that is uh, being uh, food, clothing, shelter, and education. And despite, um, you know, the Kenyan government being uh, lauded for having free primary education, that has been plagued with a lot of corruption where, yes, despite there being free primary education, it is not what it had been envisioned. Not because um, the donors are not uh, putting in uh, the money that they had promised, but because a lot of that money is ending up in people's pockets. And so, uh, despite um, you know, us being told that, yes, this is some of the things that the government is, has really done in, in trying to, to help its citizens, we really don't see that. Because at the end of the day, I would prefer taking my child to a private school as opposed to a public school. 
because I know that the quality of education is not as good in a public school. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you hope that your children's children might have a better opportunity in the public schools? Yes, I, I, I hope so because uh, the, the ideal situation is that the public um, uh, structures that the government has put in place, they should be able to work. I should not be. I should not have to pay so much for basic education for my child. Yet these are things that the government is able to provide. Same thing applies to to health and uh, health facilities. There are uh, public hospitals, but in this uh, Kenya we're living in today. I would not. I would not want to go into a public hospital because uh, there are no amenities, mm -hmm. and so I will not be assured that yes, I will get the best health care that uh, that uh, that I deserve. Mm -hmm. Yet, we know that the money is there, and so for my kids, I hope that you know we can have a government in place that focuses on these um, social amenities and making it and making them up to standard because. Free doesn't mean that it has to be bad, because at the end of the day, as a, as a, as, a, as a taxpayer, we are paying for these things, and for for the government to provide them to the public and make them publicly available, then they should also be of standard. Good. Okay. What what sort of opportunities may help to create that future you want for your children? What are some of the good things that are around now? Um. I think with, uh, with every country, the start is always having it right from the political uh, perspective. That determines a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It determines whether the economic status is going to be better or worse, whether the social status is going to be better or, or, or worse. It is all dependent on the kind of government that you have. And um, as I mentioned earlier, Kenyans are, are in a unanimous decision that in a unanimous decision that uh, the politic the political um, environment needs to change. We need to elect better leaders. But then the question comes: Are those vying for these political uh, positions good enough? <laughs> Or do we need again to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, uh, maybe I should run for a political office and, and be the change that I want to see? So that is the biggest question right now. And so, because when you look at, the, as I mentioned, the, the current aspirants that are there, we all agree these are the people, these are not the people that we want to see. There's none that we, we want to be president. And so, especially for us uh, young people, uh, we then ask ourselves, then should we look amongst ourselves to get uh, a political, as uh, I mean, a presidential aspirant? Uh, apart from the ones you've mentioned already, there are other ob obstacles mm -hmm. to achieving the kind of future you'd like to see for your children that have to be overcome. Mm. The other obstacles are... Um, I think they're economic mm -hmm. because um, for for us, for me to be able to give my children the kind of future that I would like, then uh, I need to be in uh, in 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 a pos in a certain position financially, and that is something that um, as 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 a young couple we have been uh, you know seriously thinking about what kind of uh, education do we want to invest, what kind of uh, um, uh, upbringing do we want for our children, both um, uh, physically growing up and as well as spiritually. Okay. Yes. On Africa's development in general, um, how do you see that in terms of political, social, cultural or economic aspects, whatever? Yeah. What's the future for Africa? Wow, that's a... That's a Big tough question. question. <laughs> That's a really tough question because um, I was just discussing with a, with, a, with a friend of mine the other day that um, uh, 
one of the things that um, poised Africa to being a continent to be uh, admired in future, those are some of the things that still pull us back. I'll give you a very good example. Uh, there was a recent discovery of oil in Kenya, something that um, Kenya is not known for. And um, if I look at it from an optimistic point of view, then uh, it means that uh, as a country, we stand a better chance of um, of, uh, of, improve, of improving our standards. But at the back of my mind, I know that that might not happen. And, and uh, this is looking at um, other African countries that have made the same discoveries. Because um, if you look at a country like Nigeria, the whole reason why there's a lot of uh, conflict and, uh, and turmoil in Nigeria is because of, of the oil. Uh -huh. And so uh, when I look at uh, the biggest challenge that, that Africa has is knowing how to deal with its resources. And, and the biggest problem that we face is we do not have control of our own resources. Okay, good. Yes. What part can citizen media play in bringing about positive change in Kenya and Africa in general? Information. They say information is power. And so, one of the things that I love about um, citizen uh, media is the ability to to focus on some of the things that mainstream media would never pay attention to. And I've seen that in my own country where a certain situation happening in the country is picked up by a blogger and this is something that uh, would never make headlines because uh, our, our mainstream media, uh, we have more or less figured out exactly what they cover. You will never see any other story apart from a political story making headlines, news headlines in the, in the daily newspapers that we have. And even human stories rarely get the attention that uh, political stories get, uh, let's say when you're watching news or anything like that. And so uh, one of the things that I have come to see with the Kenyan blogging scene, and, I, and it is also uh, happening in other African countries is that there are those who are choosing to focus on matters that the mainstream media does not care about. And uh, once in a while you will get the mainstream media taking an interest. I'll give you a very good example. Um, recently, like about uh, a week or so, there was a Kenyan blogger who came to know about uh, some certain songs that were being sung by a group of musicians uh, who were really criticizing and slandering one of the political opponents, whereas at the same time praising a certain political opponent. And uh, this uh, blogger wrote about it and actually gave links to the, to the songs and gave translations because the songs were sung in the local language. And uh, it is only after that, that story was highlighted by the blogger that the mainstream media took it up and uh, then there was a formal complaint that was made. And right now as we speak, two of the musicians have been charged. So that, that is just an example of uh, the role that uh, online media and, citizen, uh, and, and, and citizen ha citizens have been able to, to use the internet in uh, uh, giving voice to uh, issues that would otherwise never see the light of day. And so I feel that the impact that it's going to have, uh, in, not just in the world but even in Africa, is, uh, is quite huge and, 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 and we're already seeing that. And uh, in terms of, um, of uh, being able to 
overcome certain challenges like let's say internet penetration um, we are still we still have a, a long way to go in terms of being able to have every 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 household having internet connectivity or access to the internet for them to be able to get this information but at least the stories are trickling onto the online uh, sphere which mm -hmm. it never used to before okay yes. now your chance to say a final thing to our global community <laughs> before we have our global voices photograph for the summer do I have anything to say? Uh, all I can say is that um, citizen journalism has really changed the way that we uh, receive information and perceive uh, uh, especially Africa and I think that is, that is the future. Um, anyone who's interested in knowing what is happening in Africa I don't focus too much on mainstream media because a lot doesn't make it to mainstream media and so I believe that um, citizen media has a has a, a way of uh, being able to change the way that the world thinks about Africa. Thank you very much. All right.